everyone, I'm Emily. And I'm Scar. And welcome back to another episode of the Cottage Whores Podcast, where we get whimsical, wild, and whatever else every other Wednesday. We have an exciting episode for you today, so we hope you enjoy. Hello, beautiful people. Oh my god, hello, beautiful people. I say it twice. Because <laughs> they're extra beautiful. Yeah, but then you like put me in a corner because I was like, now I have to say a compliment, otherwise I look mean. <laughs> I do want to look mean. <laughs> Oh, that's. I'm sorry. I did not mean to like good cop, bad cop us. Yeah, that's okay. I'll be back off. I don't mind. I do mind actually. (laughs) I do mind. What an an interesting note that we're starting this episode on. I mean, perfect. We're just going to chat today. We're having a chin wag, as (laughs) Scott called it. Okay, that's like. I don't know. I don't know. I think. I I like using that term. I think it's funny. It's a very British term. I think it is funny. I just, I've never heard it before. Oh, I'm sad that I've never told you that before. Anyway, we're having a chin wag yeah. about Yeah, honestly, things. like, the fact that we've been friends for so long and I've never heard you use that phrase. I know, I feel like I must have, but maybe I just haven't. Which is kind of sad. There's so many things that you probably haven't heard me say that I say a lot, just because it doesn't come up in conversation that we have. Yeah, that's fair. Maybe I tone down my, my Britishisms when I'm around you. You don't have to. I, I know, accept but... you for who you are. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> that means a lot. <laughs> Thank you, Barbie. <laughs> it's a really hard job, okay? My job is British, as disgusting as that is. <laughs> You're very brave. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's a plague. Okay, what are you I mean, about honestly. That? <laughs> okay, but just like real quick, if anyone is brave for being in a country, I think it's me. <laughs> I live in America. I mean, so af- scary here. I mean, after what Rishi Sunak said yesterday, but as of recording this, I am also scared. I'm also alarmed by the Conservative I government. But I do not don't want to have be... context for that. Um, he's been saying some really mean things about trans people and using them to sidetrack the actual mess ups that the government has done. So he's he's blaming them like illegal immigrants in quotation marks legal because you know, um. Bearing in mind, like, based on the recent, like, survey, trans women especially make up 0.4% of the population, but he has completely targeted them, saying that they need their own special ward or have to be in the men's ward. Just, like, random ass shit like that. And I'm like, okay, I'm too exhausted Ew. for this. And so is everyone. And it's just dumb. <laughs> it's just so dumb. I'm like, shut up. No one cares. And I saw this TikTok, and it was like, things I'd rather have as my PM than Richard Sunak. And so... <laughs> <laughs> it's some of my favorite things and someone said bob the builder and i was like yeah read me the rat from ratatouille just anyone else <laughs> i'm done <laughs> is he your prime minister right now yeah okay because i know you went through like 72 of those real fast so yeah we, we we've been for a moment oh there was like one and it was like i'd rather like the i can't remember it was like this the last breadcrumb a pigeon eats and then regurgitates out would be a better prime minister and i was like yeah it would be oh a vegan greg sausage roll that's up there. That was up there as one of the people on the list. I was like, yeah. Oh. There's just, 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 just a lot going on in the world right now. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. We're, um, it's about to be election season. Oh. So, it's, uh... We just don't, I just don't like, <laughs> I just don't like it. <laughs> I just No. It's like I have like obviously very strong thoughts and feelings, but I also don't like talking about it because it just makes me angry. I'm like, I don't want to be angry. It's also Ooh. like, obviously I care and obviously I vote, but I'm so exhausted. No, genuinely, by having to give a shit. It's also like it's so infuriating as well because a lot of people, like, fortunately, like there's no one really that I know that has like very opposing opinions to me, um, which is nice because I don't have to like not argue with someone but like have those discussions but you see it online all the time and i'm like i just i just don't have the brain capacity to be dealing with with these takes right now i just no. don't i just don't <laughs> no all right let's move on to lighter things actually it, it's not really lighter we're talking about some not as heavy as politics but we we are basically our chit chat today is going to be we have thoughts about things <laughs> too many thoughts <laughs> too many thoughts about too many things um basically obviously if you've listened to our podcast you know scar and i are very close friends and we talk daily 
Um, our new thing is sending voice messages to each other. We've just, we've skipped texting and we've gone straight to just, we just send each other like six minute voice notes back and forth all day. Yeah, um, like that effectively. <laughs> but as a result, we have a lot of conversations about a lot of things and we agree on most things. Um, so it's not like we're not going to be like arguing with each other. <laughs> um, it's more just we, we have random thoughts and unfortunately we gave ourselves a platform to talk about these things. So now you are subjected to hearing our opinions. Yeah, and I think also, like, it's not silly, well, some of them, I guess some of them in the grand scheme of things, they are silly things to dis- discuss, but it's not, like, trivial things. They are important matters to discuss, which is why, I don't know, we just chat the most random shit sometimes. Like, we'll be talking about, like, waking up in the morning having coffee, and then we're, like, talking about how the capitalism, like, how capitalism affects video games. Like, it, <laughs> it's really a roller coaster from, from everyone. It really is. It's, honestly, um, we should just, like, screen record some of our voice notes and just like put them together and throw them into a tiktok because also just the range of topics because like we also will talk about like six different things in one voice note and then have to respond to that person's six things and then also add more things so like we just have like this running like total of topics and like i know that i've forgotten to respond to some of them because i will listen to the voice note and then immediately forget everything you said and so sometimes you also get like multiple in a row like sometimes i've sent you like four because i'm like oh yeah i forgot to mention this and i forgot to mention this and i forgot to mention this like i never responded about the bread bowl thing this morning in olive garden i realized no and you never responded about animal crossing lego oh yeah i was excited for that (laughs) i was like hello (laughs) i listened to that one and then i was also talking to kyle about it um i would also love a museum oh please a nook's I cranny um i would also love to see because i know they i think they've done it before i would love to see like the tree but in like four seasons so like you get like a that'd be cute for each season i think that would be fun my my issue here is though is that um kyle and i have both gotten into lego and it's expensive it is why, and i know this why is it cost so much money and like, also have you seen the lord of the rings rivendell yes set? yes five hundred dollars i think it's also like again like i know most lego now is now like licensed by like star wars marvel etc etc so like they're all like affiliated with someone else but they're obviously more expensive as well like than just like a normal lego set made by lego you know what i mean because it's like yeah. officially branded so like these are going to be even more expensive and i'm like oh. it's, <laughs> it's kind of annoying actually that so many of them are licensed because like i get it you know it's cool but i wish there were more for like adults that are not licensed yeah um, because, like, I feel like you can either get the licensed ones or you can get ones aimed at kids. And I'm not saying Lego shouldn't be aimed at kids. The, ultimately, yes, that is the demographic. But, like, for example, Kyle got for his birthday, he got this, um, medieval blacksmith set. And, like, that one's not licensed. And it's really freaking cool. And I really like it. And I want more like that. Mm. No, it is true. Like, I think as well, there becomes an issue of, like, things being legally distinct enough. It's like, if you, if they're like, oh, we're going to make a Lego, I don't know shop it's like you've got to make sure it's not infringing on any other lego shop or here's like a lego museum or etc like i think that's where they fall kind of into a trap a little bit like i'm sure they have contracts where it's like you can't make any other superhero stuff because you make our superhero lego so they just kind of fall Mm. into such a narrow trap which is such a shame because yeah the only lego set that i i mean i used to build lego so much as a kid like i have well i do have a little lego mandalorian on my shelf um but my favourite Lego set as a kid was the Indiana Jones Lego. I had kids, you know, that was like, mm. putting all the fucking hieroglyphs on the Lego was so infuriating, but I loved it. Um, <laughs> but, the, but the only Lego I have at the moment is some of the Lego botanical, like the flower ones. I have mm-hmm. those. But that's the only ones that I have. And I guess they aren't licensed, but they are like Lego botanical. So they are like their own thing. But... Yeah, I have the... I have one of them. I have one flower set. I want to get the other one because there's like... I think I have the wildflower specifically. I don't know what I have. <laughs> I don't know what it's called. But yeah, there, I I want the other like bouquet of flowers. Yeah, they are nice. I and then they also, do... oh, there's one where it's like different birds from different parts <gasps> of the world. Oh, that's cute. And there's there's a a robin. That, it's actually specifically the England robin because I was like, that's not a robin, and then I was like, oh, that's the England robin. Because if you have not looked this up. Um, American robins and England robins look differently. The England ones are actually much cuter. Um, <laughs> but they look different. I'm gonna look this up now. You've never seen this? Oh yeah, it's it's a whole thing. Um, oh! And then they have a hummingbird from South America, and then they did a... They did one from North America, and I can't remember what it was. Might have been a blue jay. 
that's cute i like that i like stuff yeah. like that yeah i wish they did like more space stuff like not like rocket <sighs> ships but like hard. but like spe- like actually like the planets or imagine, i don't know something like that i was gonna say imagine like a whole solar system yeah that's With, what like, i'm thinking the sun in the middle that would be so cute i would love something like that um i Kyle did really i that. I did really like, and again, they were expensive, and I guess they are <laughs> licensed, but when they did, like, the Starry Night um, painting stuff, I thought that was really cool. Oh, yeah. Um, I liked that. I thought that was fun. But, yeah, it, it's a shame. Because, they're, like, they're basically, for kids, you can get, like, the little, like, Lego sets that are, like, the speedboat cop. <laughs> but it's, like, <laughs> it doesn't really appeal to me as an adult, but, like, I get it. <laughs> yeah. On Kyle's Christmas list, we do have, there's, like, this A-line... Or like a frame cabin one. Ooh, there's so much Lego. And that one's really fun. There's like so much Lego. It's like kind of overwhelming. I'm like, there's too much to even like look at. It is, and like you have to like have space for them. Like, yeah. um, my brother in law is really into Legos. Like, he will just drop money on Legos without even thinking about it. He just casually bought the two hundred dollar Bowser one, and I'm like, Bessie. <laughs> I wish I I wish I had that like ability. Um, but they. <laughs> They moved a few months ago, and they were in a one-bedroom apartment, and now they're in a two-bedroom apartment, and they don't really need the second bedroom, um, but both bedrooms have a walk-in closet, and the what, the second bedroom had, like, shelving all around, and it just became its Legos. Like, every shelf was just Legos. Um, so he has so many. Okay, I I love that. That would be that would be what happened to me. Like I don't have the space. I barely have space for like anything anymore. Like my room is so full, which I love. Like I love the aesthetic of things looking like they've been lived in. Um, so my room definitely looks like that. But I just had a look at some Lego sets, and there's a Lego bookshop, which is very cute. Um, but there's a Lego mushroom house, and it's the cutest thing I've seen. It has little plants outside. Now I kind of want it. <laughs> is it like actually Lego brand though, or is it? I don't know. It might not be actually, but it comes under it. But the Lego bookshop, that's cute. And that's on Lego.com. Because when I Google Lego Mushroom House, I get the Minecraft one. And I don't think oh. that's what you're talking about. No. So I think it's probably a it's probably like um, a... knockoff brand. But it looks so cute. Oh, I've just seen the the cabin one. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh my god, the insect collection. That's kind of a slow. Kind of love that. Oh, yeah, that one is fun as well. I think that one has a butterfly in it. So I really yeah, there is. There are some really cute ones, but like, are you talking about this bookshop? Yes. Oh no! Why did you have to tell me about this? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's now about... I need it. No, I know. <laughs> I just saw it. I was like, that is the cutest thing I've seen. Yeah, there are so many uh... ones. And it's such a shame they're so expensive. I wish I had more money. I'm gonna send this to Kyle and be like, "Hi, bestie, I want this." Hi, bestie, please. It's like um, I was where was I? I was like in a toy shop. Um, this was a while ago. Um, but they did the whole, um, oh my god, what's it, what's it called? The Daily Bugle Tower from Spider-Man, like, the whole fucking tower is huge. Oh. And I was like, where are you putting this? Like, it has to be, like, it's gonna, it has to sit in a corner in your room. Like, it can't even go on a shelf. Like, it's massive. It's a whole street and I know, everything. I saw, I saw a TikTok the other day of someone who had Legos and she was moving. So, like, the whole TikTok was about, like, her moving her Legos. And she had the Millennium Falcon. Do you know how big the Millennium Falcon is? No, it's massive. Is? That thing is huge. It also broke. It, no. Like, crumbled into pieces on her drive. And I was like, oh. <laughs> no. Because at that point, like, you know, obviously, yes, you have the instruction book. But how do you even figure out when it's in, like, built pieces? I would honestly, you almost like. almost have to start over. Yeah, I would pretty much, like, if I was. I would probably just have to destroy it and start over. You almost have to because, like, I actually, even just doing my flowers, which are not that complicated, like, there were times that I was, like, I would skip a step and yeah. miss a piece, and I'm like, I can't even figure out where this piece needs to go now. I have to, like, completely backtrack three pages and, like, start over. Yeah. I think sometimes you just have to just take the L. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for that one, I'm like, no, I can't. That's the thing with big logos. I'm like, you'd, you'd have to destroy them. Um, I, I just don't. I just don't. I just don't have the capacity. But then you do get to rebuild it, which is, I guess is fun. So it's like two for one. So that means girl math, the money goes down. Because you get to build it twice. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. So, this girl also had the Titanic. <gasps> and I'm what? looking at that one right now. And it is $680. Like, she has money. Oh my god. Money, money. I'm trying to think of... I'm trying to think of like what is even like equivalent to that what I like own 
even like oh, collectively. I... Also, Hocus Pocus, I know this is a licensed one, but Hocus Pocus is my favorite Halloween movie, and they have a Hocus Pocus Lego set, and the fact that <gasps> I can't have it yes. fills me with rage. Um, I'm also looking at this haunted house, and now I want this one. There's so many cute ones, and I'm just like, why is it so expensive? <laughs> <laughs> I want them all. See, that's the problem. Everyone's like, oh, once you're an adult, you have adult money, and you can buy what? adult no. things. And it's like, no, because you have responsibilities, and you have to be smart with your money because you have like exhausting. <laughs> you have adult tax and adult rent <laughs> and adult shopping yeah. and adult food and adult bills <laughs> it's like i i don't like it <laughs> i don't know it, it's like the worst part i'm like i just and it's also this... like you're like oh this 600 hundred dollar lego that's like almost a mortgage payment for me so it's no, like typically <laughs> i can't justify buying a lego that's nearly the same amount as my monthly house payment <laughs> Yeah, it, it is, like, crazy. When you put things like that into perspective, I'm like, man, sometimes it would be nice to have money, like, to be able to have, like, I don't want to be rich. Like, I mean, I might sound silly, but, like, I don't want to have too much money because I think that's just, like, an overburden that I don't need in my life. And I think it causes more problems than it perhaps, like, solves, at least for someone like me. But, like, I would like yes. to earn enough money where I don't have to think about money. You know what I mean? Like, where it's, like... yes. I'm being conscious about the fact that I'm spending, but I'm not necessarily like, oh no, if I spend X amount, I won't be able to, you know, do stuff. But it's like, that would be, that's nice. That's like comfortable where it's like, I can afford to buy things and not be stressed. Which Yeah, I think it's unethical to be like too rich. Like, yes. No one should be a billionaire. That, oh is, that is unethical. It's crazy. I'm like, what do you do? Like, <laughs> like I would really love to be rich enough to like, help other people like and i don't mean yeah. just like donate to charity but i would love to be that person that like goes out to a restaurant and is like here's a thousand dollar tip because i can yes. like i just yes. have a thousand dollars to like give yeah that's also fun though like you know what i mean like that's also just like fun because you're like kind of being a menace but like not in a bad way <laughs> like yeah. you're being like a vigilante for good for, properly for good just be like hey let me pay off your student debt for you yeah see that's cute that's the like, of, that's yeah. that's the kind of rich I'd want to be. Because yeah. at the end of the day, I don't want... I Do I want a nice house? Yes. But I don't need, like, extravagance. Like, I actually... Mm. I look at, like, big, big houses. Like, if it's more than four bedrooms, do you know how much cleaning that is? I might well, like, you could just hire a maid. And I'm yeah. like, I could. But also... But it, yeah, that's when it gets, like, Because I silly. want my house to look lived in as well. Like, yeah. you touched on that earlier. Like, I... Like, my, my cousin has a really big house. Um, They built it, you know, everything like that. And is it nice looking? absolutely but you walk in and it's like sterile it feels mm. like a pinterest house like it does not feel homey like we're actually we're on vacation right now i'm live to you from vacation um <laughs> we're staying at an airbnb which that is a whole other unethical thing but you know we could have a whole discussion on that we're not going to right now but uh we've stayed in a few airbnbs before um and this is the most like homey one we have mm. stayed in like, I walked in, I was like, oh, this place, this place feels comfortable. It feels nice. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. feel like just an Airbnb. No, exactly. It's like, sometimes you want, like, when you go to, like, a hotel, you kind of want it to be, like, a more, like, like a sterile environment, per se. Obviously, because it's, like, that's the vibe. But, yeah, I as long as my house has all the things it needs to have to be a, to function and all the things that I need, I'm like, that's it. Like, it doesn't matter if it's yeah. on, like, a, it doesn't matter if it's, like, on a street or it's completely in the middle of nowhere as long as it does the job <laughs> it's, it's, same with cars like i listen i get people are really into cars um I, i'm personally not i'm like as long as the car drives and gets from a to b i don't give a shit what it looks like <laughs> i don't care if yes. it's ugly like obviously i don't want my car to be ugly like i have some semblance of like no that's not a very nice looking car but <laughs> but i'm not like obsessed and need it to be the best next thing i mean my yes. car is like 12 years old it's literally on its de deathbed the dashboard doesn't even fucking come on anymore but it drives and it works <laughs> so i love it <laughs> so i mean okay there are certain features i like i got a new car uh march of last year um mm. i needed a bigger car before baby came yeah um, but like there are certain things i like uh like i wanted an suv that had like a backup camera um 
I wanted heated seats, which I had in my other car, but I wanted, like, better heated seats. Um, So, like, little things like that I did want. But, like, my yeah. parents are, like, the car people that, like, they're, like, oh, my gosh, we saw this, like, 1968 Mustang convertible, and it was so <laughs> pretty. They actually have – they, like, casually bought, like, two Mustangs. So, my, my parents Hold are on. car people, and I don't get it because then they make me come look at it. And they're, like, oh, my God, isn't this car so cool and so pretty? And I'm, like, it has doors and wheels. It's a car. <laughs> like, yeah. I – Unless I look at the little, like, logo on the car, could not tell you what it is. And even then, I sometimes get them wrong. Like, I confuse them. So, like, I could not tell you the – I could not look at a Corvette versus, I don't know, another convertible and, like, know the difference offhand. Um, so, yeah, I'm not a car person either. If it gets me from A to B, that's what we need. Yeah, I'm just like – there's some things that I just don't get. You know, I'd rather spend my money on, like – I don't know, every game's console than, than a, like a Tesla or like a Bugatti or something, you know what I mean? I guess my priorities just lie elsewhere, which is, which is fun, right? It's what makes us human. But like, Everyone's- at the same time, you know, to, to also say, so my mom just bought a slingshot, uh, which is a car. Um, it's a little, like, it's got one wheel in the front, two wheels. <gasps> wait, no. Oh my god. Two wheels I, in the front, one wheel in the back. I, can't, I, I love those cars. They're quite fun. <laughs> um, it basically is like a little go-kart. And like, she has been driving it around every weekend like that is her idea of fun mm. she goes and she drives in her slingshot so like if that is your hobby yeah exactly great. our hobbies are just different like yeah i agree i would love to buy all of the consoles and also like i wish i had more money for video games in the sense that like i think about like fay farm that just came yeah. out which everybody was so excited for fay farm and then i looked and it was 60 dollars. and do i think that the creators need to get paid for their work yes absolutely but i'm like is that game really worth sixty dollars of my time? That exactly. It, it that's the thing as well. There's so much stuff like that, and especially we were talking we were talking about this, where it's like how many games come out <laughs> that it's like yes. you really have to basically pick and choose what you want to consume. Which I get it. Like overconsumption is bad, but also it's like sometimes you just want to play numerous things, and you, having to be like, oh, actually, I can only afford X and not. Like, it's the same with, like, Baldur's Gate for it. Like, to be fair, I was never going to probably play Baldur's Gate, but, like, it came out and I was, like, intrigued and I've been watching people play it. But, like, that was an expensive game. And, like, I get why. Like, don't get me wrong. I do get it. Yeah. But I'm also, like, for me, logistically, like, I can probably only buy, like, one big game a year. So, like, I brought Tears of the Kingdom. Like, that was the big game I brought this year. So, it's, like, realistically, yeah. I can't really afford anything else. Like, I can. But, like, no big games. I can't afford, like, any blockbuster games because I'm, like, well, <laughs> that's that's my gaming budget gone. <laughs> Well, it's also, like, I I play a lot of cozy games, so I follow a lot of cozy games. And, like, mm. they're all kind of the same. Yes, they are. Like, hot take. so many of them <laughs> are just, yeah, like, maybe this is a hot take. I don't know. But, like, I look at them and I'm, like, and I'm not saying Stardew Valley is, like, the OG. Even though it, it kind of is, in a way. I feel like it's one of the older ones. But yeah. I look at so many games and I'm, like, that is just Stardew Valley. I already own Stardew Valley. And Stardew Valley is still only like $15 most of the yes, time. Like, you can get it on sale a lot. So it's like, why would I pay $60 for basically Stardew Valley? Like, here's the thing. Um, if any if any gamer, gaming companies are listening, um, give me a cozy game where I can run a coffee shop or a bookshop. Oh, a bookshop, I'm, please. No more, no more farming sims. Or a library. And I know there are... <laughs> oh, a library, that'd be fun. And I know there is a bookstore one out, but it it's not what I want. Like, g- give me Stardew Valley... But with a bookshop, yeah. Which actually, I guess we're getting haunted chocolate here, um, which is yeah. Not a but that's it's a, a chocolate shop. But <laughs> yeah, that kind of vibe. Give me though. a not farming sim. I know it's there's like so many games where I'm like, I, like Dave the Diver. Like I haven't played it, but I watched people play it, and like that was fun. Like it's a cozy game, but it like it's obviously to do with like fishing and like stuff like that. I'm like that's cool. Like it's taking the concept, but it's making it something new, um, which is cool, right? Like you're taking the core yeah. things that people like. They like the characters. They like the kind of I guess monotonous thing of like doing the task um, and then being able to like expand and unlock things and there's a story to it like that's fun and there's like um, the Nintendo Direct there's a League of Legends game which is like um, which looks interesting like a cozy game yeah. and then and I'm like I'm kind of intrigued by it but then I'm also like how I need to see more of it because it seems like there's more there's a lot of elements to it but I'm also like it kind of is on the edge of being so similar to everything else but I'm like, mm-hmm. maybe you can surprise me. <laughs> but yeah, like I, I played. Um, I don't know if you've played it or heard of it, but Strange Horticulture. Yes, that one was fun because that yeah. one's different. 
it just needs a little bit of spice. <laughs> yeah, just give me something. Give yeah, me a little I, bit of something so it's not just a farming sim. And, like, so many of them even look like Stardew Valley. And no, like, exactly. I know, like, pixel art, like, you can only do so much. But, like, you, but like they even put, like, the toolbar in, like, the same spot. And they make it look very similar. And I'm just, like, if I wanted it, to play Stardew Valley, I would play Stardew Valley. It's, like, it falls into that cap where it's, like, if it's not broke, don't fix it. So people are going to capitalize on the fact that people enjoy those games. But at the same time, like we're saying, like we really enjoy Stardew Valley. So it's like, why would we change when we have something that's perfect already? You know what I mean? Like, I don't, you yes. have to be very compelling for me to to give you a try, um, which might sound mean, but I'm broke. <laughs> so deal with it. <laughs> Honestly, and it's like, like I even looked at um, Paleo Pines, which just came out, which oh, is like yeah. a dinosaur farming one. I was like, that looks cute. And even Kyle was like, yeah, that looks fun. And then I was like, realistically, like, how much would I pay for this? And Kyle was like, I think $30 would be, like, the high end. And that's even pushing it. And the game is $30. And I'm like, yeah, like, I just, I don't yeah. know if for me this is worth, because it's kind of like, is this $30 of fun for me, you know? Yeah, it is It is difficult. Like, with games especially, like, you have to kind of equate, like, how many, like, I always say, like, how many hours am I going to get out of it, right? Like, with Tears of the yes. Kingdom, I can't remember how much I've spent on, like, 50 quid or something. And, like, I've put 210 hours. So, basically, if the math serves, I've spent, like, it was, like, 40p an hour. <laughs> like, yeah. when you, like, so, like, for me, I'm like, wow, that's really worth it. And I will always replay that, right? And then there are other things where I'm, like, Stardew Valley, like, when I bought it, um, you know, obviously, I put so many hours into it. The same with, like, The Sims and things. So it's, like, there is an element of replayability to it um but i will say i did buy like um i did p- buy and play return of obra din which is like a puzzle game it's very hard but it's really good fun like me and my mum played it um and you can play it again i guess but like you kind of know the solution so i guess it's not you'd have to wait um and i think it was 15 pounds but for a game that you basically can really only play once i was like that is an investment and it was well worth it and i was like chef's kiss and i want more games like that and i know there are some out there and i'm like just give me more positive positive games, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. It's it it definitely there it's hard. It is. <laughs> like I love how many video games there are out there, but at the same time it's like, oh, this is a lot. And this is this is kind of what we were talking about this morning and like I wanted to touch on it a little bit in the podcast is like we were we were talking about we started talking about super massive games as we always do. If you have listened <laughs> to this podcast, you know that we love super massive games. Yes. Um talking about how some people take them too seriously and they're really not meant to be taken seriously they are quirky fun little games they push them out every year which is quite a feat it's It's crazy goes into a video game um and so like no they're not gonna win game of the year award but like they're fun and they're replayable to an extent because you get to make different choices and you get to see different outcomes and they have Mm -hmm. the curators cut and everything like that um so they're fun and they're they're a cool thing and i think the video game world and granted i'm not like heavily into the gaming world but i think a lot of of the video game like group of people are way too harsh on video games yeah um like kyle is playing starfield right now i have not played it looks fun it i mean it looks like a bethesda game like he's been playing it and i'm like are you just playing fallout 4 because sometimes this really just looks like fallout 4 Mm. um but, like, he's having fun and he's enjoying it. And I think that's okay. But, like, so many, like, people are harping on Starfield. And is it a perfect game? No, there is no perfect game. Um, and I, th- I think people are, like, slowly losing the fun of video games. And, yeah. like, you either, you, you either get a game that takes years to make and it looks absolutely incredible. Or you get a game in a few years and maybe the graphics aren't perfect. But also people are way too harsh on graphics. Like mm-hmm. 4K has ruined us, honestly. Because it has. people like, okay, yes, I love a pretty game as much as the next person. But also if I want to see beautiful trees, I will go outside. Like I do not need the screen <laughs> to give me beautiful trees. Like look out a fucking window, please touch some grass. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's crazy as well. Like, um, because I think I think a problem that this like stems from is back in the day, not to, not to be like one of those people, but vi- video games used to be a luxury, like they used to be a privilege to be able to afford them and have them because they were quite not rare. Like obviously things existed, but obviously, you know, in the nineties, like being able to have consoles and being able to have that access to games was it wasn't for everyone. But now, fortunately, in the age of the internet and the age of technology. 
video games is far more accessible than it used to be like we even see it like in media when you look at like early 2000s 90s media like if you play video games you're a nerd because it's like a very niche thing and now it's not which is fantastic right like this accessibility has gone through the roof but i think that's also led to more problems because people take it for granted and the fact that we were just saying like so many games come out every year so many games i mean nintendo direct does mm-hmm. is like three times a year now so think about that and like i have problems with nintendo direct because i'm like i like i enjoy mario and there, there's some cool stuff that is coming out but like for me i'm like it's the same thing it's just more mario games and i'm like i get it's your leading mm-hmm. franchise but i don't know <laughs> do something else and it's just sometimes a bit silly because it's like we've seen this before and then people get mad because obviously it's like we were saying like we're guilty of it. We always compare things to Stardew Valley. Unfortunately, every choose your own adventure game is going to be compared to Until Dawn. It's just the way it is. When you hit a landmark like that, you can't escape it. Um, which sucks for everyone else. <laughs> it's like <laughs> yeah. now because like you can, you can like we're never going to get another Until Dawn. We're probably never we're never going to get another Stu- Stardew Valley. Like it just won't happen, right? It just will mm-hmm. not happen. You're going to need to have someone to create something completely new from scratch again to get the same hype and attention. But that's hard because people know what they like. So it's like, how do you break that? Like, how do you break that off? It, you kind of can't. Like, like, people didn't really like Tears of the Kingdom because it was too different from Breath of the Wild. And I'm like, yeah, but that's the point. Like, how many games yeah. do you want them to make that's the same before it's just the same? I mean, how long, how many more tracks and DLC are they going to add to Mario Kart before they make a new fucking Mario Kart? Like, what is happening, Nintendo? <laughs> At the same time, though, what even would a new Mario Kart look like? Like, what what would we be making a new Mario Kart? I don't know. Like, there like, wouldn't be. That's what I mean. I'm just like, what is happening? Like, there just comes a point where it's just like, you just have to take the fact that this is dumb. <laughs> it's like reached its limit. I, 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 well, just... I think that too, like, you know, streamers and Let's Players and everything are great because I, I watch them, you know, because there are games that either I can't afford or I don't really mm-hmm. want to play because they're not my play style, but that doesn't mean I don't want to watch them. But I think the problem is it has turned into such a community of, like, big showy stuff that yeah. they always feel like they need to keep doing new stuff because Let's Players will play a game like Tears of the Kingdom in, like, two days. They're like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat this whole game in two days. And so then it's like, okay, what's the next thing? I need the next thing. I need the next new thing. And they're constantly looking for content to pump out. Yeah. And I get it because that is how they're making their money. But at the same time, it is ruining how we look at video games as a it whole. Is, because, yeah. like, really, video games are a hobby. They're meant to be enjoyed. They, like, certain games like Strange Horticulture, yeah, you're only going to get a few hours out of it. It's only intended to be a few hour game. Versus games like Tears of the Kingdom, which I've watched people play. Like, there's so many side quests. Like, Kyle said he stopped playing the main quest and he got stuck on so many side quests that he actually got overwhelmed by the amount of side quests (laughs) that you could do. So, like, you do not have to complete these games in even a week. You can play these over months and people forget that. And so, game makers are constantly like, we have to put out new content. And it's like, no, you don't. Like, it's become very capitalistic. And it's, it is, yeah. it's, it's it, really starting to, like, ruin the industry as a whole, I think. It's it's the jobification. The jobification. That's not a word. But it is now. <laughs> the jobification of hobbies has ruined them. Like, books, oh, video yes. games, crocheting, knitting. Like, all of those things that used to be purely... Like, obviously, there is an element of people make money from them, whether they are the publishers, the writers the artists or whether they are you make the games or publish the games or you know they sell the yarn like there's an element of obviously money being earned but now it's like you can't escape it like you cannot escape it if you're Side trapped in that culture yeah it's crazy i'm like i like i crochet for fun and the amount of times people have said to me you should sell these i'm like no i'm not i don't want to like i don't even understand i i have no interest in that right like i just like to crochet for me and my family and my friends like i don't want to sell my stuff not because i don't think i could like i think i could i think the quality of my things is sellable for 100 percent. but first of all the market's too saturated anyway so i wouldn't gain anything from it anyway but also i just don't want to make it a job because i don't like it anymore <laughs> like also why would not I... to mention like it's not easy to just sell something no Sites cost money there are yeah. fees and especially a lot of people are like, oh, just go on Etsy and sell things. Etsy is a terrible selling platform. Yes. They take so many fees out of things and everything. And, like, then you have to account for shipping. And now you're having to, like, it, it just becomes so much work. But, yeah, side, side hustle culture has ruined hobbies. It is so annoying. It is. And it's and it's sad as well because, like, you even see it, um, for example, like, I am on crochet TikTok because I like seeing what other people crochet. I haven't crocheted in a while, actually. I finished my blanket and then I'm like, 
in a crochet slump because that took a lot of energy <laughs> um valid but uh i'm like on the and people are like here's what i crocheted like in september this month right and it's like insane like people are making like five jumpers a blanket like coasters and i'm like what the fuck and it makes you feel guilty because i'm like oh i made like one thing right and i'm like yes and and i made one thing that's amazing even if Everyone i started a it. thing even if i started a thing i still started it right it's like we need to stop this we need to stop hobbies meant to be fun and now people are feeling shameful because they're like oh yeah but i don't do it as much as other people I'm like and who cares who yeah cares? like we we are on book talk we have a book talk account um shameless plug go follow us at floral and <laughs> fiction um but like i see people who are like here's my september wrap-up and i read 1200 books and i'm like <laughs> I got through 12 pages of a book yeah. in September. Like, it's okay if you're not I know. reading. In, I, which I also like, don't get me wrong, I think you can read a lot and absorb, but also how much are you actually absorbing? Like, no, how, for real. How much of that are you enjoying and digesting? Because, like, here's the thing. I have read a book over the course of a month, closed it, and immediately gone, I have no idea what happened in that book. I yep. enjoyed it. Couldn't tell you a damn thing about the plot, though. No, I like I read ten books in September. Is that correct? Yes, it is October now. I was like one month before you, <laughs> um, which is a lot for me. But four of them were audiobooks, and I do listen to my audiobooks on one point five speed because for some weird reason I now can't listen to anything in normal speed because <laughs> it's really because it's really slow. Um, that's just the ADHD in me. Anyway, so like in that regard, that obviously helps me get through books quicker because um, you know I'm listening to it faster um and for one of those books i just genuinely had no idea what was going on so that was just a, a miss um and then also one of the other books i actually started reading in august and then finished it on sep- on september 1st so it doesn't really count but technically i read it in september <laughs> <laughs> so it adds up so technically i only read nine books um but even like that is a lot like i don't think i'll match that again like that's the most i've read in a month i think like ever full stop but I just genuinely was not doing anything else, <laughs> which is quite yeah. sad. But there was this person, they were like, oh yeah, I read 35 books. And I'm like, what were you doing? Like, I don't think I could have read any more than 10. And I was doing basically nothing. I'm like, how? <laughs> also, like, I love reading, but after like a couple hours, I'm like, okay, I need a yeah. break. I need to do something else. Yeah. I, I, I can't read really that much in one thing. I mean, aside from, I did read... I did read the other day. I was like out and about in London, <laughs> um, and I was on the tr- I was on the train, and I finished my book on my Kindle, and then I had they both die at the end on from my li- from my library as an ebook. And I read it on my phone. And I did finish that all in one day, but that is because also that is a very quick read. But that was like insane for me. I was like flabbergasted that I read it all in one day. Like obviously not back to back. I read it on the train, and then I read it at lunch, and then I read it on the train home, and I finished it. And I was like, damn, um, which is incredibly rare for me and i'm like i don't think i could do that again that was quite intense <laughs> but i had nothing else to do so <laughs> to be fair though i do miss like when i was younger i used to like you know go read a book in a day and i do oh yeah miss that vibe of like sitting down and like starting a book and then like not doing anything else in the day and then you get to finish it and it's so fun yeah i have um i have started like reading more during the day like I mean, this is a shameless plug again, but I'm there'll, there'll be a video out on our book talk account where I talk about how I got back into reading because last year I read seven books and so far I've read 41. So clearly my tips are helpful. <laughs> but I'm doing like... Clearly Scar's an expert. Yeah. I'm doing my five top tips of how I got back into reading. So anyway, um, but yeah, I, I like <laughs> found myself actually wanting to read during the day, which is something that I never really experienced. I haven't experienced for a long time. Like before, I'd be like, okay, I've allotted my time to read before bed. And it doesn't matter if I read a page or I read 10 pages. As long as I'm reading before bed, I can add it to my story graph streak so I get the little satisfaction of reading every day, um, which is always nice to have rewards. And yeah, that helped. And then actually, you know, I've now been like, oh my God, I actually want to know what happens next. I've been reading during the day. I'm like, oh my God, I'm a changed person. (laughs) Who are they? (laughs) I would love to be that person, but I work full time. I mean, you're busy though. You're like really busy. Like I, I, I'm, I'm unemployed and lonely. You you have an internship. That's true. That is true. But like, I haven't like officially started yet. So currently, oh yeah, no, no dependencies. Um, but yeah, that's the life update I have for you. All the dependencies. <laughs> My I life have update. A five month old who is starting to become a conscious person. <laughs> 
I like how he just like she just be- beams into consciousness now. Like you hit the five mile block, no, it's, it's like a person. It's kind of wild to watch because like they start off as like potatoes, and now like, like this morning we were all just <laughs> laying in bed, um, and I was scrolling through TikTok on my phone, and Kyle was feeding her, and she was like trying to tilt her head to look at my phone, and Kyle and I had this conversation of like we have to aggressively reduce our screen time, which if you use screen time for your children, that is absolutely fine. No issues with that. We mm. simply want to keep her away as much as possible obviously yeah. we like to play video games and shit so like it's not completely avoidable um she won't be screen time free she already isn't sometimes we put on backyard against when we're like please just sit for like 15 minutes. <laughs> um but we we are like she's becoming aware and she will just watch our phones with us and i'm like this probably isn't the best for you yeah exactly it it it, it yeah it's a difficult thing as i say with no child so what am i to say <laughs> but it's also like because she's becoming conscious she needs attention like before yeah she would just sit there and now if you like are not paying attention to her she will she will either growl or scream at you until you do pay attention to her not the growling she does she growls it's wild she'll be just sitting there going Rrr. and i'm like what are you a dog yeah is your child like i'm sorry if delilah's affected your child Yes, your dog that my child has never met. Uh, yeah, just like through like symbiotic connections, just hasn't has inhabited her. <laughs> you did compare my child to Delilah the other day when talking about how my daughter can roll and your dog cannot. Yeah, to be to be clear, I did not mean it in a derogatory way. <laughs> <laughs> um, just obviously, your child can roll like from like belly to back or back to belly. Delilah cannot roll; she gets stuck on her back and she is too chunky to roll over again so she can't like she'll roll halfway if you tell her to roll over she'll roll halfway and then get stuck on her back like the bugs from charlie and lola and i don't know why i've tried everything and she just won't so have you tried using a toy to yeah. uh, guide her head <laughs> i've tried literally, do with babies. literally tried everything and she's just like no i think she just i think she just likes lying on her back she does like sleeping on her back so i just think it's same she just likes back time not tummy time <laughs> Oh god, tell me go. <laughs> okay, should we get into the heavy topic that we had planned for today? Yeah, go on. Then. Um, okay, <laughs> so we're going to discuss the problematic issue of conventionally attractive people playing villains in uh movies and TV shows and also the glorification of true crime. Yeah. So this stemmed from I recently just finished Shadow and Bone Trilogy and the Six of Crows duology, so I watched the show. Now, I have thoughts and feelings regarding all of the above, but specifically, listen, this is no shade to Ben Barnes. I love Ben Barnes. I think he's a great guy. Watch him get cancelled now, I've said that, because that's just the way the internet works. But anyway, um, I think he's cool, right? And I was like, yeah. I was... I messaged you when I first started watching it. Uh, My opinions have slightly changed since watching it and finishing it and also knowing that he wanted to play the darkling which again i have thoughts on that too but i was hesitant towards someone like him who is conventionally attractive in terms of hollywood standards playing a antagonist um and i just think it causes more problems than it necessarily solves sometimes because you just lead to people especially people who don't consume the maybe written literature not saying that you have to but like there is an element of his character in the show is it's not super different from the books but like obviously there's adaptations being made and i just think you can kind of overshadow what he's doing because he looks hot while doing it <laughs> yes and like, i have not seen the show or read the book but i do know that people ship um alina is the main character right yeah yeah with the darkling yeah simply because ben barnes is hot it is i will say there is a little bit more nuance to it than that but it is, I just, there's there's so many, compli- I'm not going to, obviously, like, I'm not going to say a lot because I don't want to spoil it, um, but there's so much complications in that, in that character and their relationship together and the way that's all dealt with. Um, but I just think it's such a hard path to navigate, right? Because I don't want to say that, I don't want to say that hot people can't be bad people, right? Because that's just not true. But I also don't want to say that bad people can only be paid by people who are not conventionally attractive because that just causes more problems as well. So it's like you can't really win. Um, I just think it leads to people forgetting that they're bad people. And to be fair, though, I think 
and and I didn't really bring this up in our initial kind of discussion of this. I think part of the other problem is that toxic relationships yes. are like so normalized in media. Yeah. That I think people forget how toxic things can be. Like I think of uh the after movies. Um Yes, yeah. I have not seen the after movies. Okay. However, did read it when it originally was a Harry Styles fan fiction. That shit was volatile. Like the amount of emotional abuse happening in that. No, for was real. Wild. And then it's turned into a movie and it's it's shown as as normalized and like this is a, a casual relationship. And it's like, no, like you should not be screaming with your partner, like fighting constantly like that. Yeah, I, I watched I watched a whole video essay on the after <laughs> on the after books because I was curious. <laughs> I was, again, I didn't want to read them and watch them. Uh but I, I this video popped up and it's like all the problematic things to do about after. Um and it's very funny. You should give a I can't remember who it's by now, which is so bad, but it it was very funny. Um obviously not funny, the topics it's discussing, but it's funny in how they were presenting it. But it is, it's it's the 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 normal normalizing things that are like there's there are i'm not saying that you can't write about trauma and abusive relationships and i don't say that and i'm not saying that you have to have gone through that experience to write it authentically however i think it's a situation that you have to treat delicately and you have to be able to admit that you've written it wrong if called out upon right like you can get that wrong because everyone every experience is different right and if you don't know the experience you can't necessarily provide a better insight than someone who has not saying again that you can't write it i think that's the same with people of like like white people writing stories about people of color i'm not saying that you can't do that but you just have to be able to understand that you are going to make mistakes um and that's okay as long as you own up to it and you accept that feedback and move on with with your writing journey because you'll never get better better at writing those stories and telling those stories unless you do it right so it's a very complicated thing that council culture does not allow people to breathe in but it's there's so much of of telling young women especially young girls that it's okay for you for your partner to be controlling for your partner to cheat on you for your partner to not like you basically (laughs) um and i'm just like this is stories that can be told but you have to make sure that you're not romanticizing it right at least you're not romanticizing it from Mm -hmm. the, the the girl's pov right like because i just because I went in the video essay after, there were like points where uh, the character Ava, I think is her name, um, like recognized that there was like red flags occurring, but then he was like lent up against a wall and was hot, so she forgave him. And I'm like, no, like, <laughs> like, like, let's not be doing this. It, it just is, it's quite sad. And then again, Colleen Hoover just feeds into this dynamic even more, and it's so infuriating. And I'm like, I'm not saying you can't like her books, but. We have to acknowledge that they are problematic in nature. Yeah, like I think about, I I agree, telling those stories is important. Like I have not seen the movie, I've seen the trailer and I've seen clips, but um, Anna Kendrick was in a movie last year called Alice Darling. Um, and it's, it's listed as like a drama psychological thriller where like you watch her be in this very like manipulative abusive relationship mm. and have to like, her friends have to like try and like help her get out of it. Um, but it's it's a very like from what I've seen of the trailer and from what I've seen of the clips, it's very heavy and like that's how you tell those stories. Yeah. Um, because you're not glorifying it in any way, but it, it is something that should be talked about because I think that's the other thing, especially with like emotional abuse, is people don't know the signs. They don't even know that they're being emotionally abused. No, exactly. Um, so it, telling the stories is important, but how you tell it is even more important. Yeah, and like I said, it's just it's about acknowledging the fact that like okay, like I I think I mentioned this on the book episode, but to give Colleen Hoover like one ounce of credit when she was called out for making a color coloring book of an abuse story she held her hands up and was like oops lol this was wrong (laughs) um but it's about having accountability to it right like you are gonna make errors it's it's okay um as long as it's like not something incredibly awful um that's just part of being human um but it's like this this leads on to the true crime thing like room the the room i don't know what the actual title of it is of it is it's, it's like called room yeah it's like that's a fantastic it's a horrific watch like not saying the movie's Ooh, bad yeah. like the movie's great but like it's a horrific watch it's so incredibly harrowing it's awfully dark one of the best movies i've ever watched and it's like that's how you mm-hmm. tell a story about like abuse kidnapping all of that trauma and do it right and give everyone in their justice 
Um, and then you have things like the Dharma series, and I'm like, no. <laughs> or Ted Bundy no, with Zac Efron, and I'm like, that. and I'm like, no, honey, we don't need to see this. We don't need to see Zac Efron playing Ted Bundy and people being like, oh my god, he's so hot. Because so I'm like, he would murder you, and he would not care. Um, I just, <laughs> I, I'm just like, no. <laughs> Not to mention, I I really think that if, like, so I know that there was a lot of controversy with the Dahmer series, for example, of yeah. the v- families of the victims coming out and being like, no, this is not okay. And for people to turn around and be like, but I'm going to watch it anyway. Yeah, I know. Listen to the victims. Like, if they're speaking out against this, maybe, just maybe, we shouldn't indulge in this. Like, um, I know, I don't know if you've seen um there's a new movie coming out about uh elvis presley and his yes. wife priscilla yeah um and priscilla has said like has endorsed it and yeah. actually the elvis presley estate has gone no we don't like this that right there tells you everything you need to know yeah, and i'm exactly. really watching that movie yeah it's the same with them um, when the uh Oh my god, I can't think of Pamela Anderson. Yes, that was who I was thinking. I was like, oh my god, I, I knew like, that's where you were going. Yeah, because yep. it's the same as that, right? Like, there was so much controversy over it, but it's like, listen, like, you need to listen to what she's saying here. Like, her, this yep. is her story, and if she's not happy with it, then she's not happy with it, or, or whatever. Um, and I think that's. I think there's so many issues with that that's not discussed, and also it become it becomes a bigger problem as well because, again, it's again these stories should be told right like they should be told because they're important to tell people that i i don't know true crime's a difficult one it's like these stories should be told because you've got to give the victims life and you've got to report on things that are that are important for public health and safety but we've gotten to the point now where it's like why do we need to keep rehashing these stories when justice has been served and the victims and their families want to rest when do we draw the line between like telling a story and sensationalizing a story yeah because it's it's hard as well like um i did a degree in like forensic science and criminology and it's i don't think people realize the impacts that it has behind this like behind the scenes logistically on how things are run because as soon as there's a case that's like somewhat similar to one that's like a media sensation case you don't stand a chance because people already kind of expect what they want to expect um and it's like there are so many things on Netflix where it's like of telling things and I'm like why like (laughs) why is this being told and there's clearly no care for the victims or those who were affected by it and it's just like stupid you're trying to capitalize on the stereotype and the idea that white women (laughs) want to watch true crime which is just inherently it's I mean it's inherently true but it's like can we stop feeding that into it I don't know it's just like I'm not saying that people can't enjoy true crime, but I think there's a right way to enjoy it and there's a right way to produce it that isn't problematic. Agreed. There is there is a, a decent way to enjoy true crime and then there's people who buy serial killer colouring books <laughs> and that's fucking problematic. <laughs> oh, uh, I just... Sometimes I just wish I could like look into someone's head and just know what they're thinking. It's like when that true crime case was going around on TikTok. Do you remember when those kids were like murdered in their school or whatever, in their like apartment? And then, like, everyone was, like, criticising one of them because she, like, hid in her room. And I was like, are you being fucking for real? Like, someone I entered their house. No. I can't remember what it was. I think he's been arrested now. But, like, it was everywhere. And it was, like, four college kids, I guess, were, like, murdered. And there was, like, another one of the other girls survived. I don't know if there was five of them or six of them, but it doesn't... It does matter, obviously. But for the purpose of what I'm saying is she was... I think it was a, a woman. I could be mistaken. It might have been one of the male roommates. But basically, one of them, like hid upstairs whilst this was going on and called the emergency services or the police or whatever and they were criticized over this and were told basically they must have had a part of it because of this and like people were looking into how the house was laid out and they're like there's no possible way like this could have happened this could have happened and i'm like what the hell like these parents have just lost their children that they like, they've lost their friends and you're going in using the body cam footage of a police officer to analyze and freely recreate a home so you can tell them that their hypothesis is wrong and they ended up like fear-mongering this man who they thought was the killer who wasn't he was just like a guy and i was just like no <laughs> like use a brain cell i don't know yeah i think i think people also forget that like at the end of the day serial killers like true serial killers are twisted individuals mm-hmm 
So, like, they are not going to think like a normal person. So, like, even though things may seem abnormal to a normal person, because they don't think like a normal person. Like, normal people are not, like, like, okay, using Ted Bundy, for example, um, going to pretend to have a broken leg in order to kidnap and murder someone. Like, normal yeah. people don't think like that. Yeah, and I think that's, again, I think we fall into this trap again, like, what's been shown by the media, and this is, this is, I mean, again, did I know the bloke? No, thankfully. <laughs> and, like, I thought, and, like, a lot of people don't. But based on reports that I had, like, we, we are fed the the thoughts from the media that Ted Bundy was a very charismatic man who could make you do his bidding. He was incredibly charming and flirt- um, flirtatious. And that's just actually wrong. I'm not saying that it's completely wrong. I'm sure there was an element of that because most narcissistic people or people who are very selfish um, do obviously portray those tendencies. But it was shown that he wasn't that kind of guy. Like, it was shown that he wasn't that intelligent. Like, he was just a guy, a white guy who could capitalise on the incredibly underfunded destroyed police force and could take advantage of women because he was physically stronger than the women that he chose to prey on because they were young like girls and college students and he had a car and he looked like a he looked like a professional you know what i mean like he looked like a like a guy you could trust in quotation marks you know he wore a suit um he preyed on the fact that like you said like he pretended that he was ill or harmed like (laughs) like there's something about that helpful nature yeah that, and it, are, that is inherent in women unfortunately yeah and it's just like even in the interviews like i'm like some of the stuff he's saying i'm like he's just a guy <laughs> yeah like we've just been told like oh he's really charismatic and scary as a fear monger and i'm like that's just a lie like it's just a genuine lie because that that sells that that's what makes it interesting that's what makes the appeal i'm like no <laughs> that's just not correct not to mention, like, why would you want him to be charismatic and like attractive like why it's because it was used this is a whole thing and like we studied this in criminology and like again i don't really this was a, like like three years ago now so it was a while ago but there is this idea that if you especially with ted bundy um he was like so close to what was like the american man at the time like he was just everything the american man stood by and looked like like he was just a white guy mm-hmm. who was like fairly well kept and groomed he kind of he had a stable kind of career and intelligence that was like he was just there he was very like he could blend in and that makes it scary right if you're trying to tell women especially to stay in the house and do their job and to sell girls this is why you shouldn't go to like when ed kemper when ed kemper was roaming around why girls shouldn't go to college it's because they're gonna be preyed on by these men it's a fear tactic to be like look this is why you shouldn't hang around with people like this like it was definitely used as a way to kind of keep people under wraps and it just led mm. into such a dangerous rhetoric and it's like it's it's more complex than that um but it was like when the yorkshire ripper was around like um in the uk and like he was preying on people in the red light district there's a reason why no one really cared until the public were like no we want to do something about this and the police finally set up a curfew but it was kind of like too late at that point and it's because oh you know they don't really care about these women because they're obviously in a district that is like run by prostitutes so they don't really have the public interest at heart because like well they aren't the public that we like <laughs> like it's just like one of those things that just is the way it is it's like meh but it is it's like it's easier to hurt people it's easier to cause people stress if it's people that they would inherently trust like it's been proven that people are more likely to trust and help those who look like attractive because we associate that with like niceness or like you want to impress them so it's like those being the villains is scary or scarier um because we're like we're more likely to avoid people who we don't consider to be attractive which i think is just stupid but it's just what it is i guess science yeah that's interesting that does make sense though yeah it's just it's 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 hard it's 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 a it's a weird thing because i i do agree i think there's ways to it right like i know you talked about in our book episode uh mind hunter yeah and i think like that's that's a way we can discuss true crime yeah exactly like let those it. let those people tell their story because they were they were involved like again like not saying that john douglas should go out there and be like hey <laughs> i basically <laughs> became besties with ed kemper until he like tried to kill me <laughs> but he's being honest right he's like here's the situation and here's how you can actually fall into these traps because it is easy to do that. It is easy to get lost into true crime. And then it, you can almost form parasocial relationships with these people because you know so much about their lives. Um, 
it's like if you know all their childhood and then all their like upbringings and then everything they did you kind of do form like a very problematic connection with them um even if you don't realize it because you've just you're so aware of who they are um which is basically what happened to him and he was like lol <laughs> almost died <laughs> almost died in an interview um it's quite funny how he writes it's not funny but like it's quite funny how he writes about it because he was like it was then that i realized i made an error and i'm like yeah no shit john um, yeah not saying that the average person is going to be in that situation but just to just to be cautious of i mean everyone's guilty of everyone's guilty of it as well like um i like for example with six of crows casbrook is not a good guy right um but you know Freddie Carr's Freddie Carr's a good man. <laughs> also, like I have not read Six of Crows uh, yet on my list. Um, I do think, and like I know I'm part of the problem. I will admit this. There is something inherently like addictive of like someone who hates everyone but <laughs> loves you. No, and, for like, sure. Would burn the world just to save you. Like there, there is something so alluring about that. Yeah, I I agree. I think. Um... I think this that's like something completely to unpack. Maybe we'll unpack yeah. that on like our trope episode because <laughs> I guess that falls into it. Um, because I do have lots of thoughts on that as well. But yeah, I think it's just one of those, it's it's super interesting and like I'm I am so guilty of it because like I said, like Hasbrook is a great example. I'm like I am in love with a criminal. <laughs> like I'm sorry, Mama, um, I'm in love with a criminal. <laughs> but it's also like um, this is a completely different thing. And I'm sorry, I haven't brought up this yet. And I have to because it's been so. I just need to mention it. Do you know what I'm going to say? What I'm going to say? That's problematic. No. Oh, do you not? Okay. Um. Anyway, Hannibal Lecter from Hannibal. Uh. Uh. Listen, yeah. I love that show. I have so many thoughts about that show. I could do a whole podcast episode on how cannibalism is so inherently linked to queer love, and so is vampirism. It's a whole thing. But anyway, um, there is. <laughs> There's so much to unpack with with fanables, is what they're called. Uh, listen, I love the show. I like the dynamic, right? Um, Hannibal Lecter's obviously a really bad man. He eats people. <laughs> um, but there's something as Mad Nicholson knew what he was doing when he was playing that man, and it's infuriating. I'm like, stop, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, I've not seen the show, so I cannot. I cannot try and um, But it, but it's 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 hard, right? Because like he's basically based off a real character like he's he's meant to be well he's oh, he's not meant to be ed game but like people are like he's meant to be ed game i'm like he's not though like that's more texas chainsaw massacre it's this whole thing but anyway you know hannibal Lecter is like kind of steeped in realism of, of, of who he's trying to portray and the nature of the book like silence of the lambs and things like it's but i'm also but like obviously that's where things become problematic because it's a retelling of a story and then you cast people in it and then it gets shown to a young audience inherently female who then take these two characters, um, presenting them as queer and telling stories about them and then obviously like liking them. And it's like, this is where also we cross a really dangerous territory where it's like, where do we draw the line? And I'm not going to sit here and say that you can't enjoy the show because I enjoy the show. But it's like, <laughs> I don't know. But it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's no, strange. It, it is hard. It's, and it's, it's such a like, it's such like a nuanced thing because like, at the end of the day, it is media, and media is meant to be enjoyed. But like, it's such a slippery slope to think critically about media while also yeah. enjoying media. Because no, if I you would think too critically about media, like all media is bad. Yeah, I think there's also, I think also like you kind of I'm not saying that you need to be consuming like really really bad things, but there is also an element of like it's actually kind of important to sometimes open your eyes to media that is criticized, good like poorly or. or like highly acclaimed because i think it opens your eyes because it's like i will never read a colleen hoover book there are so many authors i'm just calling her out because i just don't like her <laughs> um but it's like i've watched videos of people discuss her books because i was like i actually need to know what they're about because it's not fair to me to just shit on an author that i don't know what she's writing like i kind of understand the synopsis of them but i'm like i kind of need to be a little bit more like thoughtful and then since then i've been like no like what she's worrying about is inherently problematic. She hasn't really stood accountability for it, so therefore X, Y, and Z. And it's like sometimes that's kind of all you can do. And there are some things where I'm like, no, like we could go back and we could tell, we could say that Tolkien was an ass because he used the word gay in like every chapter of the Lord of the Rings. 
<laughs> and it's like, or you see F slur. I'm like, are we re-? like, yeah, I don't agree with that. I don't condone it. I'm not going to sit here and say that, but I'm also like, yeah, this is where we get challenging, right? Because I'm like, well, it was written a very long time ago and he is uh, in his grave. <laughs> so <laughs> what are we going to do? <laughs> right, right, yeah. I also think, like, that also is, like, I don't want to say, oh, it was okay at the time, because yeah. it wasn't. But also, it's it's such, that's, like, its own, like, nuanced thing. Yeah, you do have to, cri- you do have to criticise media, you can, ca- you have to criticise media in two ways. The time, the when and where and the time it was written, and now. Like, how it imp- impacts society now, right? Like, there, there are so many things where it's, like, Harry Potter, for example, it's, like, you have to criticise it in the moment. I'm not saying that anything really in that, at the time was, like, great i mean you know naming a black car- character <laughs> kingsley shacklebolt is i don't think was ever going to be acceptable <laughs> unless you're writing it like during the slave trade um or like naming your only asian character cho chang but you know just jk rowling things i guess but there's an element of you have to criticize her and her writing when it was published and and then the eras of the movies and then now given what she said who she is um and the problematic nature and it's like you just have to be aware of that you can't not say you can't enjoy those books or enjoy the stories they tell, but it's just being aware that there is more to discuss here, but not doesn't necessarily need to like take away anything if you don't want it to. Yeah. Which is hard. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> yeah. Listen, media is is difficult. It, it is. is. It is. But I, you know, it's important to keep having these conversations, I think. Um because I think you can get too overcritical, but I think also it's important to kind of keep this in mind. Yeah, like, I don't want to say pick your battles because I think that's, like, dangerous to say because you should be aware. But there's also an element of there are some things that aren't as important to keep in the forefront of your mind than others. Um, Like, there's passive and active problems to fight. And I think a lot of the time people pick rarely minute problems and make um, a mountain out of a molehole, to use another phrase, because they feel like they can make a difference and i get that but we all have this weird savior complex especially with council culture and i think it can get rather silly (laughs) yeah i also think people are like so inherently chronically online which does not Mm -hmm. help because they are making mountains out of molehills for the smallest of things and i think also and this is kind of like a slightly different topic but the like the what about me-ism that's happening these days is the absolute worst um i don't think i've ever seen anything quite so infuriating because it's and if you don't know what i'm talking about it's basically people get upset that not everything caters to them um yeah. people are becoming inherently so self-centered about everything um an example i saw of this i saw a tiktok discussing this and in that tiktok she brought up this woman who was making this bean soup for um if you are a person who gets periods Beans are very high in iron. So this person was saying like, hey, this may help you keep your iron high during a time of the month when you are losing blood. Mm. Um, important thing. And a lot of comments are like, what if I don't like beans? And it's like, then <laughs> don't fucking make the soup. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, well, it's also steeped in in ableism, like largely as well, because I was, yes. having, this, I was having this discussion the other day with my parents where I was like, I watched, again, this is like, really stupid and i'm sure a lot of people don't think like this right but it really like i don't know why i picked up on it i guess i was just in like a really like critical mood <laughs> that day but there's a, there was a sketch sketches advert on after like during halftime during the football um and basically sketches have started doing these like slip on shoes which i know like is not a new thing um it just obviously helps you put on your shoes without having to up laces etc and it's like easy because the back um, of the shoe is softer so you can actually slip your foot in etc etc um the two people that they used to cast for this advert no criticism against them um but like they're two able-bodied white people right like a, like a white woman and a white man um what well, well, what guy is actually quite famous he's an ex-footballer but for the sake of this point he's a white man <laughs> um and i'm like this is a fantastic advert but it i felt like it kind of missed the mark because i'm like this isn't who the target audience is for I'm not saying that you can't use the shoes right if you are able-bodied but clearly it's targeted more towards an audience of elderly people or people who maybe have chronic pain or rely a little bit more on extra support and assist when putting on shoes example i'm like you could have shown that but instead the feedback from that advert was i don't need this This is stupid i can just tie up my shoes it's like you had the opportunity to do something really amazing 
accessibility wise and you just kind of miss the mark by not quite selling yeah. what you wanted to sell and it's such a shame because i'm like it's like all those um sock like those tools that you put your sock on to help put your like you put it it's like a i don't know how to describe it <laughs> but it's like you put a sock on this weird like rail thing and then you and then so it means that you can put your socks on without having to bend over obviously it's not targeted towards the average person it's clearly targeted towards people who with mobile issues people who are pregnant etc 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 the amount of people who are like i'll just put my socks on I'm like bitch it's not for you <laughs> like, right i'm like it's not for like, you it's, it's and it's so easy to just not say anything yeah i know I'm like, like if if i am scrolling through tiktok and i see something that is not targeted towards me or I don't like. Do you know what I do? I fucking scroll. Yeah, I'm like, awesome. It's like they've started doing, um, like, more cinemas, especially here in the UK. They've started doing, uh, like, movies with subtitles on, which have, it's like this little box that you, like, gets attached to the chair and it leans over so the subtitles fall the, on the bottom of the screen, but you can still watch the movie, etc. And those people were like, this is going to get in the way. And I'm like, it's a fucking thing that clips onto the chair. It's not permanently there. And even if it was, you just don't, look at it you just move it out the way it, like fits into the side of the chair i was like bro do you not have better it's fish so to fry in- <laughs> it, it's <clears throat> so incredible that the people and this is mostly white able body people mm-hmm. the world that is so catered to them already the second something is not designated for them it's like something oh. is being taken away from them it's, it's and I, I i genuinely do not understand that mentality no because it's like making the world easier for other people does not make it harder for you no because it's, it's also not taking anything away like th- th- like in not that that would be a fair argument anyway because like you said the world is already catered enough to to people who are white and able-bodied but it's like it's not even taking anything away it's usually just adding something or it's usually yes. just like an addition and i'm like it's like um <laughs> this is so dumb but i remember this being like a really big issue and now that i think back on it, i'm like why how have we made it this far as a human race um but basically in stores you can get these like wheelchair lifts that take like if there's a little bit of stairs um there's like a little wheelchair lift and i don't know if you know exactly what i'm talking about but like you wheel on and then you do it rises it doesn't go that far it, it's it's not meant it's not like an actual elevator it's just a little lift thing mm. um and it takes up space right so do fucking stairs and so does an elevator so it's irrelevant but people were like it takes up too much space there could be another rack for clothes and i was like i wish there was another grave to put you in <laughs> but, but <laughs> the world's not great karen is it like i'm just like um because it's like these are things that could affect you in the future right like you might need to be a wheelchair user in the future you know through old age or, or something like that like and the world's not catered towards people like that i'm like just be mindful it's not hard like, how are you equating yeah. a wheelchair lift to a rack of clothes in JD Sports? Do you, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> no, it is it is absolutely wild how, and also, like, this is kind of the same conversation, but also kind of not. And I know that, like, people who choose to be child-free, um, that is their choice. And I'm not yes. saying the world has to be catered to children by any means. But the people who vehemently hate children... And it's do a, not think children belong in public spaces. Red flag. Terrify me. It's a red flag. That's so weird. It really is because, like, you were a child. There's a time and place for children. You were, and like, there's a time and place for children. Don't get me wrong. Like, I would not take my kid to like a adults only five star restaurant. Yes, that is meant to be a, a simple, quiet environment for people to enjoy a nice dinner. Mm-hmm. However. If I take my child to fucking Texas Roadhouse, are you really gonna be pissed about that? First off, I don't, I don't think you have Texas Roadhouse. No, they're fucking loud. <laughs> they are just a loud restaurant. Like, who cares if I take my kid? I know. And also, like, if you bring your kid out and they are, because we actually did go out to dinner once, um, and it was you know just a casual restaurant, but the kid was running laps around because like there was like the main seating area and then you went up a couple steps and so it was like a slightly elevated seating area and they and there were stairs on both sides. And the kid was, like, fucking running laps and going up and down the stairs and, like, running. And I'm like, that is a problem. The kid actually ended up tripping and falling down the stairs. I did laugh. They kind of deserved it. I was like, mm, that serves you right. Maybe let's not run. Like, don't let your kids do shit like that. But, like, yes. also, you do not get to complain about children existing in no, public. No, that's the thing as well. It's, like, it's, it's so many times I go, like, into a, into a shop. Like, I go into Tesco's, for example. And, like, there are people there with their kids. And their kids are, like, crying or, like, I don't know. They're just, like being children right they're just doing children things um whether they that be like crying as a newborn baby or they're like i don't know toddlers just like 
trying to steal everything off the shelf. Not steal, but like take everything off the shelf, right? <laughs> like, yeah. or they're eating a baguette, like raw from the car. You know, just 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 children things. And like people always like stare at them, and I'm like, bitch, like it's not that deep. Also, like kids are gonna cry, and I'm like, and there are people out there who like don't take your kids shopping. And I'm like, what if you don't have that luxury? What if you don't have childcare? What if you're a single parent? What if you know? What if what if what if what if? What if? And, and she's like, just give people a peace of mind. It's like I was on the tube the other day, and there was this woman with her pushchair, and did anyone help her put her pushchair onto this escalator? No. Um, until this random woman who also had a child attached to her hip decided she needs help. I would have helped her. I was going up the other escalator. So for me, I could not intervene. <laughs> I was going down and she was going up. Um, just to add some clarification here that I didn't just leave her and her child stranded. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it wasn't until like another parent was like, oh, I'll help you put your, help you put your wheelchair. Like, cause there wasn't a lift at this tube station, which is stupid. And there should be lifts at every tube station. I don't know why. Um, but I was just like, can we just can we just help <laughs> people? <laughs> yes. Just. Also, um, on the crying child thing, I promise you, it is so much more stressful for the parent mm. with the crying child than it will ever be. I can imagine because as someone who has a child now, first off, any crying like sets my anxiety on edge, but especially in public because you know people are staring at you and yeah. judging you. <sighs> and it's silly. Horrible. It's like, it doesn't matter. Like, because, like, I've cried on the train before. Do I get stares? No, because I can cry silently. <laughs> but babies also, don't have that like, luxury. It's very weird that we expect children to act as adults. Yes, I know. But even though they're, like, brand new humans. Yeah, like, I know. It's just. Here's the thing. I sometimes can't regulate my own emotions. No. I'm 27 years old. Sometimes I struggle to regulate my emotions. Why would I expect a two year old to be able to do it perfectly? Yeah, and then also it falls, it, like, people like kids who can't regulate their emotions even if they're like freshly out of the womb are like the parents then criticized for not keeping their child in check and i was like do you have any common sense like i don't think you do (laughs) also this is this this is a different rant i'm gonna keep it really short and then we can probably wrap up because we've gone on so many tangents the way that capitalism has ruined sleeping for children drives me absolutely insane because the number pretty much the main question i get asked is was well, your daughter sleeping through the night? No. And you know what, Susan? Neither am I. <laughs> I don't sleep through the night. I wake up at night. But I am a fully formed human who can yeah. give myself a drink of water or go to the bathroom or deal with what I need to. So I'm not going to cry about it. Um, but no, I do not expect my five-month-old daughter to sleep perfectly through the night. No. Because you know what? We're human and humans wake up and that's okay. And I hate, I hate, I hate the way sleep training has become so inherently capitalistic and it's like well if your child is not sleeping through the night you need to buy the 60 dollar mm. course so i can tell you to do all of the things you're already doing also it's also no one's business it's not like, it like, doesn't at the end of the day it doesn't matter and like so many things people are like oh, well you need to let them learn to self-soothe and it's like mm. why Mm-mm. because if there's one thing i want my kid to know it is that i am always fucking there for her yeah and i will always be there for her no so that's do i that's like waking thing. up at 2 a.m and dealing with her no nobody likes to be woken up but will i get deal with her every time yes yes yeah i agree that's one of my like only things like if i do ever have children that's one of my things that i've like i am dead set on is like there is no such thing as is like cuddling or comforting your child too much like i don't agree with that i'm like if my child wants to be attached Actually, to me at 24 7 like pfft, how about it baby we're going we're going on an adventure <laughs> i saw tiktok yesterday it was like well what if your child gets used to you comforting them and then expects it and <laughs> is that a bad thing what if i'm like wow. okay obviously there's an element of like if your kids come into you like for very like minute things obviously there's an element of like okay if you're feeling like this perhaps we can redirect it like when they become old enough to to do so right but it's like I wouldn't ever care, you know? That's kind of your yeah. job. Not, like, parenting isn't... I don't like it when you... That, like, I don't like when people like parenting is a job because I think that just is, again, it's silly and it takes away from the actual connection and bond. But, like, you know, that's kind of your responsibility as as the caregiver is to provide care. <laughs> Which, that might sound crazy to people. <laughs> but, you know. Yeah, I think... I think also, like, kind of touching on the, like, uh, expecting people expecting kids to be adults i think people inherently go into parenthood wanting a baby but not wanting a child no i would agree with that whereas like i think yeah i would agree with that i think there's an there's an element of people just want yeah people want they want an accessory yeah and i think and i think that's what makes 
it, that's what can lead to not necessarily bad parenting, but people maybe missing the mark. You know, yeah. it's like for me, I'm like babies are the least. No offense to babies. No offense to your baby. <laughs> babies are the least interesting part. Like I want a baby. Like I want like toddlers are fun because they can like interact. Not saying that babies can't interact, but you know what I mean. Like there's a little bit more of like an ability to play when they get older. Whereas like when they're a newborn, I'm like they're just a baby born doll. <laughs> like, no, I agree. You know I, what I mean? I like no offense think... to babies. <laughs> no, I I have a baby and I agree with you. I think that the, you can be a baby person or you can be a toddler person, and I think I'm a toddler person because yeah. people are like oh, you're gonna miss the newborn days, and I'm like, are there parts to it I miss? Yes. Do I miss most of it? Absolutely. Yeah, not. I because think obviously you do, now. but yeah, she, she interacts and she giggles, but I also like will it be hard when she's mobile? Obviously, but oh my god, can I not wait to like not have to carry her? Absolutely yeah, everywhere. but also it's just like it's fun to be able to see your 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 child develop. Like that's part of the fun, right? Like yes. seeing a little human grow. I'm like, I don't want a baby. <laughs> if I wanted a no. baby, I just buy a fake baby. <laughs> Babies are boring. And yeah. Then also, it's like right now she's getting to that age where she knows she can do things. Which but is exciting. She actually, know how to do them. Yeah. So she just gets really frustrated, and <laughs> screams about it, and it's not fun. Yeah, but it's fun. It's fun because she's like there. You know what I mean? Like she's on the precipice oh, of, yeah. of milestones, which is so fun. I'm like, um, babies, yeah, babies, there. babies learning that they're humans is so funny. <laughs> it is. There was like a good like two weeks that she would just lay on her back with her fist up. Oh my god, yes! She just realised that she had hands. And she oh, that was, was like, those are my favourite photos of every time she was just like doing the fist in the air from the breakfast club. And I was like, icon. Icon behaviour. Yes. Yeah, that is that is funny. Oh god, and like when they start to talk and they just say random shit, I'm like, yes, speak your truth. <laughs> Alright, this has been a very long episode, so yeah. we should probably. That's nothing new. It. Taylor's version. Wow, that was a plug. <laughs> to Taylor's version. Something that we don't need to plug. <laughs> no, I know. I just <laughs> felt <laughs> Swift is enough media coverage. Well, listen to that song specifically. Anyway. <laughs> but we can I, end now. Um, <laughs> this has been fun. Hope you enjoyed our ranting. Yeah. Apologies. <laughs> I'm not sorry. No, no, I listen. Well, if, you, if, you cho- if you listened, you chose to listen. If you made it this far. You get one jelly bean. If you made it this far, hi, Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. Kyle gets one jelly bean. That's all I can okay. afford. <laughs> well, see you in two weeks. Bye. Bye. so much for listening if you haven't already make sure to subscribe so you never miss a new episode to stay connected with us then follow us on social media which are linked in the description i've been emily and i've been scar tune in next time for the best cottagecore podcast for the cottage whores